What's up guys, it's Tom with Ferris Engineering and today we're going to be going over the installation of the suspension covers for your GR86. So with the addition of the suspension covers, we're looking to reduce drag and ultimately increase downforce on the car. Uh, of course, you'll want to pair them nicely with a rear diffuser and transmission tunnel covers. Uh, and with all that included in one package, we are ultimately chasing that egg of better lap times. So that being said, let's jump into the install and get right to it. All right, components you receive as part of the kit. We got two left and right suspension cover units. Of course, you have a hardware kit with some nice sticker in it, with a nice sticker. You have your mounting brackets, outer brackets, inner brackets, and that's it. All right, tools we need to complete the install. We're gonna need a drill, need an eighth inch drill, uh, drill bit if you wanna drill a pilot. Oh my God, quarter inch drill bit. We need a six millimeter Allen, five millimeter Allen, four millimeter Allen, uh, those can be Allen keys or sockets or wrenches, T-handles. You'll need a ratchet, 11 16 wrench, and a 9 16 wrench. All right, so here's our home for the next uh, hour or so. Uh, we're going to be working on the forward section of the rear subframe. We're going to be first installing four rivet nuts, two on each side, and that way we'll have provisions for mounting the mounting brackets. So. Let's get into that. I'll show you guys how to install these rivet nuts. All right, so here we are at the front of the rear cross uh, member or subframe. Um, on the passenger side, uh, we already have the rivet nuts installed. Um, we just did that, unfortunately, during the test fitting process, but these holes are pre-existing in the car, okay? So we need one M8 rivet nut installed in this location. And we'll need one M6 rivet nut installed in this location. And this is a mirror on both for the other side. So the M6 rivet nuts will be on the inboard uh, locations and the M8 rivet nuts will be on the outboard locations. You'll also be able to tell because the M8s will be a larger diameter hole that, that's already uh, in the subframe. It's about a half an inch. And the hole that is for the M6 rivet nuts will be about 3 eighths of an inch. All right, so just to reiterate, two on each side, uh, M6s are inboard, M8s are outboard, and you're going to use the provided tool that is in the hardware kit. You wanna thread the rivet nut onto the bolt, and once you have it bottomed out, you're going to hold back with a 9 16 wrench, the uh, hex portion of the tool, and you will use um, either a five millimeter Allen, um, five millimeter Allen, uh, to turn the bolt. And as you do that, make sure you hold this entire tool steady and flush against the subframe uh, and the hole. And you're going to tighten this. You'll feel some initial resistance and then it'll give way. As you keep tightening it, you'll feel some more uh, significant resistance once this is fully crushed. And then you'll have a fully installed rivet nut just like these. So go ahead and install the M8s on the outside and the M6s on the inside. And then when we get back, we'll start mounting the brackets. All right, I got my five millimeter Allen wrench and uh, two of the outboard brackets. Uh, I also have the two M8 by 20 millimeter long button head cap screws. And so we're going to install these on the car. Uh, they are a mirror of each other. So basically what we wanna do is make sure that the flange portion, this guy that's mounting to the subframe is pointed towards the front of the car. That's an easy way to identify it. And you want the flange that is mounting to the diffuser to kind of point towards the rear of the car. Same thing, make sure bolt is in the middle of the slot and it is perpendicular to the car. Tighten that up. And now we'll move on to the inboard mounts. All right, inboard brackets. Uh, we have two different kinds. One is a triangular shape and the other one is a straight uh, piece of metal. Um, it has two different length uh, ends or flanges on it. The longer flange is the flange getting attached to the subframe. So we're gonna take our 20 millimeter button head cap screws uh, with 18 millimeter washers like that and we are actually going to put a five millimeter spacer on the top that's going to allow clearance 
for uh, the welds and different little weird indents and stuff on the subframe. Uh, this particular bracket should have, it is a C shape if you, if you look at it, and you want the C or both the flanges to kind of be pointed towards the rear of the car. Once you have that lined up, again, close to the center of the slot, torque that down to six foot pounds. All right, passenger side bracket. This is the triangular looking one, okay? Um, we want the mounting bracket, it's kind of a C-shape again, right? Pointing towards the rear of the car. You want the uh, top of the triangle kind of point or uh, mounted to the subframe. And of course, uh, same hardware setup. We're using 20 millimeter long button head cap screws, 18 millimeter washers, and a five millimeter spacer on the top of the bracket. So that's between the bracket and the subframe. Get it lined up, torque to six foot pounds. Now we're gonna go and mount the uh, suspension panels up and make our marks to drill the rear diffuser in order to accommodate the mounting holes or bolts. All right, so we need to uh, set the uh, suspension covers up onto the car. That way we can uh, mark the holes that we'll need to drill in order to bolt the suspension cover to the rear diffuser. So what I've done is take out the bolts for the rear diffuser just so that we could do this on the car and that will allow the rear diffuser to flex down just like this take those bolts put them somewhere safe um, and then if you look at the suspension cover this edge and this edge should be square with this section of the diffuser, right? So if I line them up against the diffuser, do it like this, you guys can see. Just like that, you'll see that they line up edge to edge. So because of that, I'm able to basically mark the holes through the under panel or suspension cover onto the diffuser. Just like that. Now, more or less, what you're looking to do is just kind of get the left to right location. And if you, if you notice that the hole is kind of wonky uh, up and down, you just want to center it on this uh, forward flange on the diffuser. And that'll get you where you need to be when you drill the holes to mount the suspension cover. All right, so I got all that stuff out of my hand. Got a center punch. And now I'm just going to center punch the marks. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can start with an eighth inch uh, pilot and uh, drill some pilot holes first, but I'm gonna go straight to a quarter inch. A quarter inch is what we want to drill the holes to. Uh, so I am going to drill that now. All right, now if we uh, did everything correctly, this should all line up with all of the holes. So let's do that now. Take your 16 millimeter button head cap screws and 18 millimeter washers and, no. Kind of temporarily bolt this guy up. You're gonna want a, one of the M6 serrated flange nuts for the top side. You want the button heads to be on the bottom. All right, so what we're looking for is basically this surface here between the diffuser and the suspension cover to be level on the same plane. Um, we also wanna make sure they line up side to side just like this. And that of course, all of the bolt holes line up which they do. You really only need to get a couple in there and then you can eyeball the rest of them or you can put them all in if you'd like. But basically make sure all the holes line up. Then you wanna to torque all the button heads to six foot pounds. Of course, we're gonna repeat the process for the opposite side, exact same process. But once you have all the button heads torqued to six foot pounds, we're done with the install.
All right, we got both sides bolted up, all the bolts again, torqued to six foot pounds. And uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for the install. We're gonna cut to some sweet glamour shots, but before that, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at veristashengineering.com. And until next time, we'll see you later.